know that security is a huge part of um, the reason why Taiwan Relations Act is so uh, important, not just because of weapons sales. Um, I want to read to you another part of it here. It says, it is the policy of the United States to maintain the capacity of the United States to resist any resort to force or other forms of co coercion that would jeopardize the security or the social or economic system of the people in Taiwan. Can you tell me what does that involve? What, what does that look like? Yeah, so what that means is that um, the United States believes that any settlement, any solution between Taiwan uh, and, or between, let's say, between Taipei and Beijing, mm -hmm. uh, needs to be one that comes as a result of peaceful negotiations. So when we signed the Taiwan Relations Act, and if you look at the, uh, the three joint communiques between the United States and, um, and Beijing, they all rest on the assumption that the solution to this situation will be one that comes as a result of peaceful negotiations. And any efforts to use violence or even um, use coercion that threatens violence um, is, is contrary to that type of outcome. Um, and specifically, we believe, is, is really detrimental uh, to the stability of the Taiwan Strait and to the people on both sides of the strait. Um, so to us, um, as I mentioned, we feel deeply invested in the security and the stability of the strait. Uh, we believe that the status quo, as imperfect as it may be, has actually ensured decades of peace and stability across the strait. And so we feel very protective of that status quo. So when we see efforts to alter the status quo, we view that as, as a threat to mm. the peace and stability that we think people on both sides of the strait have really benefited from mm. for a long time. So, for example, recently we saw two Chinese uh, jet fighters which crossed over the median line in the Taiwan Strait. Would that be considered a, a provocative act or a change to the status quo that the United States would be interested in maybe voicing an opinion on? Yes. In fact, we did voice an opinion on, on that. Multiple yeah. times, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, that was definitely a collection of behaviors that we viewed as, um, as being coercive as being provocative and and threatening to the status quo and so we you know frequently uh call on everybody involved to to abstain from these types of behaviors and, and generally speaking taiwan has been a really strong partner in helping to maintain uh the the peace and stability of the taiwan strait and could the united states do something more than than speaking out against this sort of act um you know i think it it depends depends on the situation. So for example, um, when uh, various countries in Latin America were pressured to sever ties with Taiwan, the United States took some more um, assertive or offered a more assertive response. We uh, withdrew our ambassadors from those countries. Um, you know, we look for ways to send as strong a message as possible that we think that this kind of behavior really undermines regional stability and is really unproductive to what we think is in everyone's best interest, which is, of course, peace and stability. Um, but the Taiwan Relations Act and the three joint communiques also say that the uh, solution to cross-strait problems needs to come as a result of peaceful negotiations between Taipei and Beijing, mm. so between the two parties. Let's talk a little bit about um, the U.S. military that are stationed at the American Institute in Taiwan. Now, recently, this has become a news item again um, about the fact that the AIT has uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines that are in the AIT office and will be in the new compound as well. Uh, what is, what, what's your take on this story? So, um, you know, this was something that we said recently. Uh, we are frequently asked about our security posture. People are really curious about um, U.S.-Taiwan security cooperation. I think it's just a kind of topic of intense speculation and curiosity. And so we really just wanted to let people know that um, actually since 2005, um, among the personnel at AIT have been active duty military who have included members of the Army, Navy, uh, Air Force, and Marines. And, um, you know, this is, yeah, this is part of our operation. And this is something that people knew about in 2005. Yeah, we, we put out a notice then. I mean, if you Google it, you can see there's news reporting all the way back <laughs> to 2005. So this wasn't really meant to be a news bombshell. So why did, do, do you think it's become a, a thing again? I, I don't know. I think the pace of news can move very, very quickly here. Mm. I know the news media environment is intensely competitive. So mm. I think sometimes people print before they... 
um, really <laughs> do all their well do all of the requisite research. So um, there was nothing really new about this uh, this statement. We were really just providing context to people. But it, at the same time, then uh, Beijing has responded to that again. So that means that you need to then respond to Beijing. We don't need to respond every time they respond. I mean, I, yeah, I. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the life of a spokesperson, right? right I mean, this right. is kind of, yeah. But not every inquiry deserves a response and yeah. not every, uh, you know, angry message deserves a response. So in this case, we were stating something yeah. that's been true for a long time. We don't, it, it's never been a secret. It's something we were really upfront about when it mm. started. And, uh...